Now, I don't know about anybody else, but ever since the news dropped about Charlotte the Stingray potentially being impregnated by either a shark or the Lord, I haven't been able to think about much else. 24 hours, non-stop, just Stingray thoughts and Stingray dreams for old Jason Miller's wildlife. That's why I was so sleepy last week's episode. But it got me thinking, what is a Stingray? Why are they so flat? And how dangerous is that infamous Stinger? We'll find the answer to all those questions and more as we continue exploring the Tree of Life. All stingrays are rays, but not all rays are stingrays. And some stingrays, even though they are stingrays, don't have stingers. See why Latin names are important? Ray is the common name for the members of infraclass Batoidea, which includes the stingrays, skates, sawfish, and electric rays. With a few notable exceptions, all batoids have flattened bodies with thin tails and large pectoral fins that join the head with the rest of the body. The fins can be triangular, like an eagle ray, circular, like a giant freshwater stingray, or ovoid, like a butterfly ray. The fins move in an undulating, wave-like pattern, causing them to fly through the water rather than be propelled by back-and-forth tail movements like most fish. You may expect this to slow them down, but the manta ray, the largest and fastest species of stingray, can reach up to 22 miles per hour in short bursts, giving them the ability to leap out of the water like a dolphin. A flattened body also allows them to cruise unobtrusively over the seafloor in species that hunt crustaceans, mollusks, and worms. And many bottom-dwelling rays, like this porcupine ray, will camouflage themselves by covering their body in sand with just their eyes and breathing spiracles showing. But what happens when camouflage doesn't work? What sets stingrays apart from other rays is the presence of barbed stingers at the base of their tail. Like this one. The stinger is present in most, but not all species in order Myliobatiformis, and it works a bit differently than you might expect. Unlike the stinger of a scorpion or a bee, which injects venom into the bloodstream like a hypodermic needle, stingray spines are made of solid cartilage covered in a thin membrane. A gland at the base of the stinger coats the serrated barbs in venomous mucus, and when piercing a victim's skin, the membrane is torn and the venom-covered barbs are exposed. At this juncture, I'd like to point out that there is no such thing as a stingray attack. The stinger is used exclusively as a defensive measure, and most stings happen when people accidentally step on a stingray. Of course, the stingray doesn't know it was an accident. It just knows that it's being hurt by a large animal. So it whips its tail up over its head with enough force to drive the spine into its attacker. When the tail is pulled away, the serrated edges do further damage by tearing the surrounding flesh. While the attacker is distracted, the stingray makes its escape. In rare cases, the stinger will actually break off and stay lodged inside the wound. But luckily for the stingray, their stingers grow much like their teeth do, regularly being shed and replaced. Stingray venom is incredibly painful, but it's rarely fatal. In fact, laceration and infection from the spine itself is more likely to cause serious injury than the venom. And also remember that like almost every wild animal, a stingray would always prefer to escape rather than fight. The best way to avoid a stingray encounter in areas where they're common is to shuffle your feet through the sand without lifting them. A stingray will sense your movement and swim away before you even know that it's there. This leaves us with just one question. What is the difference between a skate and a ray? I'll explain next week when we meet the members of Order Rajaformis, the skates. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by liking, commenting, subscribing, and share it with your friends if they like things too. Follow me on social media stuff to find out what I'm doing, where I'm going, why I'm doing it. You won't learn any of that. And I'll see you next Friday. Until then, stay curious, stay connected, and never, 
ever stop evolving. If I see a single comment with Steve Irwin's name on it, you're going to spend the rest of your life hiding from me.